are on the wheel. They are on the wheel. Uh, uh. Do not move. Get out of the car. Sorry, I need you to stop right there. Dude, stop. Uh. Get your hands up. Uh. We over here right, on 436. So, hey, don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't please, please, me. please, please. Get on the truck. Welcome to another episode of Switch, where we switch the roles of law enforcement and civilians. Dang, bro, did I already get my show oh, you are, Hey, you in my city. Oh, he already take it over. Take over. Let's go. Switch. They going our head a day, yeah. All right, y'all, we in Arizona. Y'all Yo, ready to switch these roles? Yep. All right, so hey, look, everybody have fun. We're gonna be safe, but let's just make sure, let's just treat this as the real thing. There are men and women that are doing the real thing right now, and so we wanna just put you guys, immerse them in their shoes as much as we can, so that way you guys can get a sense of what it's like to be a police officer. What I'm hoping to gain here today is just really experience um, the day-to-day -day operations of being a police officer um, and understanding their thought process behind the actions that they take, but more specifically, is what the news saying about police officers true? No experience at all. I have no prior experience of being a police officer uh, or even being in any type of scenarios. Hey man, so Tatum, I saw a video about a few months ago. I think it was in Chicago. Officers are chasing a guy who's wanted, suspicious person, and he turns and fires a gun. Do you remember that video? Yeah, that was one of the craziest videos that I saw. I mean, given the fact that the guy was non-compliant, and then all of a sudden he's now shooting officers. That was one of the quickest movements I saw. I mean, the last, only other sudden movement I saw like that was in John Wick. <laughs> so, anyway. These role players are getting ready to go do that scenario today. We're going to see how they match up with the real thing. Let's go watch it. All right, man, we changing this up a little bit, man. This is the first Switch episode that's actually going to be taking place at nighttime. So this is what you got, Alex. Um, somebody said that there's a suspicious person in a business alley and he doesn't belong. They believe he might be casing, okay? They might have saw a weapon, but they don't think so. They're not sure. So all you have to do is go try to make contact with this guy. You're gonna turn this corner. You're gonna, you're pop. You'll see the guy. There's only one person in this corner. Try to contact him. Do whatever you can to try to stop him. Obviously, only um, use the amount of force to, that's necessary. All right. Don't use excessive force. Necessary. So that's all you got. Suspicious person call. And that's it. Sir, sir, excuse me, sir, sir, excuse me, sir, what are you doing here? Hey, man, get back. Get sir. back off me, man. What are you doing hey, here? back off me, bro. What's in your pocket? Back off me, bro. Do me a favor, turn around. Back off me, bro. Turn around, sir. Back sir? off me, bro. No, sir? watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> You know what's crazy is I get so many people in the comment section below saying, man, you guys want to come out and try these switched episodes. We appreciate it, but hey, you can even do better. There's an agency right now in Southern California named Rialto Police Department that's actually looking at hiring a lot of men and women to come and fill the shoes of people that can do this job for real, for real. And so what that would include is full-time benefits, extraordinary pay, but the, also the opportunity to be in Southern California. So hey, look, if you're interested in joining a phenomenal agency, do me a favor, check in the description below, tap on that link, and it'll take you straight to their website where you can apply today. Let's get back to the episode. Sir, can you put your hands out? Can you pull your hands out, please? I'm not gonna ask you again. Pull your hands out of your jacket. Sir, stop walking. Pull your hands out of your jacket. Sir, pull your hands out of your jacket. I'm gonna give you one last time. Sir, pull your hands out of your jacket. Pull your hands out of your jacket. All right, sir, I told you one last time. Pull the hands out of the jacket. Up against the wall, keep your, nope, nope, don't turn around. Turn around, turn around. Walk towards the wall, nope, turn around. Keep your back to me. Keep your back to me, keep your back to me. Hey buddy, how's it going? Hey sir, can you stop for me? 
Sorry, I need you to stop right there. Stop, don't move. Show what me you your hands. What do you got to go for? Show me your hands. For what? Don't move. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. To be honest, I thought you did a really good job at like flanking me. If you'd have came up right behind me, directly behind me, and didn't flank to the right, you know, I would I was gonna attack you right there. Yeah. But since you flanked me, you got the jump on me. Yeah. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't um, I couldn't see where you were at. Cause you know, I wasn't gonna just turn around and just blindly shoot. So when you came up, you kind of came up to the right, and I'm like, where's he at? Then I had to reassess. I had to go think about, okay, if I'm gonna attack this guy. How do I want to do this? What did it feel like to, I mean, that was a blank gun. That's the first time we used a blank gun and you could see a flame coming out. Yeah. It, made, it made me nervous, bro. I mean, what, what did that feel like? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it, it, it just became even more real, right? So it's just like that idea of like, this is a real situation and this is my first time being in any type of situation like this before. It's almost like, wait, well, I should have reacted. I know I should have felt that or something like that. Unfortunately, like, fortunately, it's fake. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> even in that time, it's like, you know, that that's, that's a real life situation that could happen and it's just literally just, you know, trying to flank, trying to be more safe, but you never know. The unknowns, you know, that's what I've talked about. Um, you know, you, you walk through an alley with someone with the hands in the pocket and you're just like, all right, what, what are we doing right now? You know, what, what, why are you here? What, what are you floating around for? And then when they're being unresponsive, I think that, that also, you know what I mean, continues to raise flags for me and, and my situation, my safety, um, being in the alley, especially at nighttime. You start pulling your gun out. Did you see a did you see a weapon? But he wasn't following command for me, so I felt I felt like my life was at safety because he wasn't cooperating with me. I don't know what's in there. Um, and then especially being at nighttime, like I said, it's my safety right now. When I'm when you're not cooperating with me and just not even responding, I think that's where I, like I said, flags in those situations were raising for me. Here's, a, here's another part of this that, that can get very difficult. It's, it's consensual contact versus an investigative stop. If a guy's just walking down the alleyway. It ain't against the law to walk down the alleyway. 100%. He's right. on public property. You can give commands, you can talk to him, um, but at the same time, he don't have to pull his hands out of his pocket. Right. Unless you are detaining him and you have a reason to detain him. All right, fellas, it's been a long day. We want to debrief some of these last scenarios. So the scenario you guys did with the suspicious subject walking in the alleyway. Let's watch the video, see how the real officers did, and then we'll talk about how you guys did. So now seeing the real footage, I mean, how do you guys think you guys did in comparison to what they did in real life? Uh, personally for me, I think the, um, the distance in which they were um, kind of by the suspect or from the suspect was, was eye-opening for me. Um, I think I, for me personally, I got a little bit too close to my victim um, or suspect, if you will. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, this really actually encompasses the whole scenario, right? So, you know, for me, I came in, I was kind of on the flank, just trying to see, you know, what I could see, see if there was anything in his arm or in his, in his pockets, as he had his hand in his pocket. I do think that this was just a, a, a prime example of, again, always being ready because you just never know what the, what the situation may be. Um, I think for me in that case was, uh, like we talked about, he was saying distance, I had that distance. I think I was slow until I know, you know what I mean? Especially given the circumstances and the situation, being in the alley and being dark, um, up to just walking right up on him pretty quickly. I look at some of the video, the officers that were chasing him behind, one of them had a taser and that was like, had a taser out. And that was the difference we talked about. Like I was going for the taser a little bit. I was kind of, but I couldn't mess with it. And then it was just like, okay, that could have been the difference between my life and, and you know what I mean? Where he could have killed me and everything else. So that's just kind of, um, it's what he said. Just you gotta be ready at all times. So let's talk to Keith, the sharpshooter real quick. Um, Cause I think Julio felt your presence a little bit out there. Julio's still mad at me. There's a moment in time in the video, you can actually see the officer's hand is shot. So he's bleeding immediately. Uh, tell us Keith, do you think that that might've happened to you? I mean. Hard to say, you know, with him doing like a turn like that. In that specific scenario, like the officer that you shot at was directly his line of sight. And you have to think like, 
bad guys and so forth, like they know when they're gonna shoot. Like they're just waiting for their opportunity and so forth. It's like, as officers, you guys don't know when you're gonna shoot. You just have to be prepared for it and react. They've got the drop on you 100%. And in that scenario in particular, it made it four times more difficult because yeah. there's four officers facing each other in an alley. Like, it's hard to believe that there wasn't fratricide in that deal. Yeah. Uh, like with some of those officers that were shooting, like that was a tough scenario. Tatum, I don't know about you, bro, but I remember chasing people down like that. And I hated those situations. When somebody's walking away from you, you're telling them what to do. They're not listening. I don't know about you, but I hated that situation. You just never know which way it's going to go. Yeah, and it adds to the, the officer's suspicion, right? You know, you talk to people, normally they comply. Normally, if you give them a good verbal command and say, hey, stop there, turn around, let me see your hands. They normally comply or do something. If a person is non-responsive whatsoever, and they have a hoodie on, they're walking through a particular area, then your suspicion is heightened. And you're like, okay, man, is this, is this guy gonna end up doing this to me? Is this guy, has this guy murdered somebody? And he's waiting for his opportunity? Is this guy trying to do a suicide by cop? You know, is this guy just, is he deaf? Or, you know, it's all these things go through your mind. This guy walking away may seem innocent, but at any point he could turn on you. Switch. Take on your